Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Dr. Cat Gone to the Dogs is brought to you by Heroes for Healthy Pets. We're passionate about your pet's health and iHeartDogs.com. Dog lovers, welcome to Dr. Cat Gone to the Dogs. I'm your host, Dr. Catherine Prim, and I'm a small animal veterinarian and dog lover. I like to use this show to educate my dog loving listeners about ways to make sure that their dogs are always happy and healthy. Today is sort of a special day because I have a guest with me, Dr. Chris Byers, who is a critical care specialist. Let's all learn when we need to seek emergency medical care for our dogs and how we can kind of tell the difference. So we'll be right back with Dr. Byers after a word from our sponsors. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite for life. Pick up two tubes of Doggo Suds. Get the third tube free. Peppermint, tea tree, lavender, Doggo Sud shampoo. Made with all natural coconut, jojoba, aloe. Great for healthy skin and soft, shiny coats. But no itchy, harsh chemicals. Lather up, rinse away. Try Doggo Suds. Buy two, get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We're back on Dr. Cat, Gone to the Dogs on Pet Life Radio. Well, Dr. Byers, I'm so happy to have you here with us today. Thanks for having me, Dr. Prim. I've been looking forward to it. Well, so today is really important because as a general practice veterinarian, emergency care is very important for my patients. And I want all of my my clients and my listeners to sort of know when is time to seek help from somebody like you. So I want to launch directly into some of the presenting signs that my, my dog lovers might see and might know are time to call the animal ER. Let's do it. Okay, so I picked some out. You may disagree, but how about vomiting in the dog? How does my dog-loving public know that vomiting is kind of a big deal for dogs? That's a great question. So vomiting happens in every dog at some point in their life. But there's one situation that I want pet parents to know about when it comes to vomiting being a red flag, vomiting being an indication to get their dog to the emergency room as quickly as possible. And that is vomiting, but the dog doesn't bring anything up. So sometimes we hear that called retching or non-productive vomiting. And the reason that that is a big red flag for veterinarians and why I want it to be a big red flag for dog owners is because when that type of behavior is seen, that makes us very concerned that a dog may be living with an emergency condition called bloat. The medical term for bloat is gastric dilatation and volvulus. So let's break that term down. What does that mean? Well, we often call it G. DV. Dilatation means the stomach's just going to fill up with gas and or food. Just going to get big. And volvulus means that it's going to flip on itself. So we have two things going on in patients with bloat or GDV. First, the stomach gets really big with food and air. And then because of that, it twists on itself. It flips. And when it flips, things can't get out, either through vomiting or through normal passage into the intestinal tract. That's an absolute emergency for a dog. Large breed dogs and giant breed dogs are overrepresented for this problem, but it can happen in any dog. I have seen Yorkies and rat terriers with gastric dilatation volvulus. So, if you're at home and your dog is vomiting 
and they're not bringing anything up, they're doing this non-productive retching, then you need to get them to a veterinarian as soon as possible. Why? Because unfortunately, uncorrected, dogs will die. They will die and they will die fairly quickly and, and it won't be any fun at all. So yes, if your dog is retching, seek help immediately. It's not one of those things where you go and Google it and you look my Facebook page up and you think you just need to go. It, they just die. That is so true. And I think it's also worth the dog owners out there knowing that effective treatment of gastric dilatation volvulus, the required treatment for bloat is surgical. And I'm not a surgeon. I don't like placing animals under anesthesia unless absolutely necessary. If we're going to effectively treat a patient with bloat, they need emergency surgery. There's no way around it. Excellent point. Well, while we're talking about the gastrointestinal tract, I see a good bit of dogs with diarrhea. And diarrhea, you know, is something I see in my general practice, but certain kinds of diarrhea, especially if they happen after hours, really need to see you. Can you talk about that? So diarrhea happens for every dog, every person. Let's be honest. We're going to get personal. And not every human that has diarrhea needs to rush to the emergency room at three in the morning. Same thing holds true for a dog. I don't pretend to that every dog owner likes dealing with diarrhea, but not every dog that has diarrhea needs to go to the emergency room at three in the morning. When I do want patients seen by a veterinarian as soon as possible, even if it is at three in the morning, is when that diarrhea has a couple of characteristics. Those characteristics are either it looks like there's raspberry jam coming out of the hind end. So that raspberry jam is indicative of fresh bleeding coming from the large intestine or the colon. The other situation where I want animals to bring their dog to the veterinarian as quickly as possible is when the diarrhea is black, when it looks like tar. So that raspberry jam diarrhea is medically called hematochesia, and that black tarry diarrhea is called melana. Now, I told you that the raspberry jam looking stuff is because there's been fresh bleeding into the large intestine. Why is the feces turn black? Why does the poop turn tar-like? Well, that's what digested blood looks like. And so what that tells us, what that tells a veterinarian is there has been some bleeding higher up in the intestinal tract, either at the level of the stomach or the small intestine. And as that blood has passed through the intestinal tract, it's been digested and ultimately manifests as that black color in the feces. Anytime I have concerns about bleeding in the intestinal tract, either because of melana or that hematochesia, we need to see a veterinarian as quickly as possible. Absolutely, because I'm with you. Medical therapy needs to be instituted <laughs> um, sooner rather than later. So while we're talking about things that are coming out of the back end, I know that you mentioned that it is important that dog lovers be aware of other kinds of discharges, like vaginal discharge on their female dogs. Can you talk about what kind of concerns you about a vaginal discharge? Sure. So in the United States... Most female dogs are spayed. They've gone through a surgery called an ovariohysterectomy, so their uterus and their ovaries have been removed, so they are unable to whelp, they're unable to have puppies. But there are breeding bitches, they're sweet dogs, but they're the population that I don't want to see vaginal discharge. I don't want to see anything coming through the vulva. Why? If a intact female dog has discharge coming through the vulva, as a veterinarian, I'm concerned about a uterus infection called pyometra. Pyometra is the big fancy medical way of saying the uterus is full of pus, and it is often considered a surgical emergency. 
So it's very important for my dog-loving listeners to know that vaginal discharge can be a surgical emergency and that their dog will die if they're not seen. So seek help. So we're going to get a quick word from our sponsors and come back with Dr. Byers right after this. Put on a perfectly possum pet party. Having an awesome birthday or adoption day celebration for your four-legged friend? Or just want a fun excuse to throw a fun party with your friends from the dog park? Deck out your party with Molly and Bandit Pet Party Accessories, party products designed specifically for pets. There are wearables, including adjustable pet party hats, bow ties, and tutus. The photo prop kits include funny glasses and hats. The party supplies and decorations include coordinating table covers, party banners, cake decorations, and treat bowls, cups, and bags. Everything you need to create great memories and Instagram-worthy photos. They're available in two colorful themes, Tropical and Fireman. It's a dog's life. Celebrate it with Molly and Bandit Pet Party at mollyandbanditpetparty.com slash pet life. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Dr. Cat Gone to the Dogs on Pet Life Radio. Well, Dr. Byers, we've talked about some things that might drive our pet owners to the ER. And there are some other really important things that I want to cover. And I actually see some of these things in my general practice as well. But can you talk about seizures? Yes, I was hoping that was going to be a topic that you brought up because seizures are scary. Nobody likes to see a dog seizure. Not parents, not veterinarians, not anybody. And there are lots of reasons for dogs to have seizures. We generally categorize them in one of three major categories. Animals can have seizures because there's something going on in a vital organ, like the liver or the kidneys. We call those systemic problems. That's one category. A second category is there's something going on in the central nervous system, so in the brain. And when we can't find a systemic problem and we can't find a problem in the brain, then we use the term epilepsy. There are some specific seizure scenarios that are considered absolute emergencies. When any of these happen, owners need to get their dog to the closest emergency hospital as quickly and as safely as possible. So what are those scenarios? One, if a dog has more than two seizures in a 24-hour period, that is considered an emergency. Technically, the term for having that type of seizure activity is called a cluster of seizures. And cluster seizures can be scary. Patients can deteriorate when they have cluster seizures, and so they should be seen by a veterinarian as quickly as possible. The second scenario that requires immediate intervention is any seizure that lasts more than five minutes but ultimately stops. When the body is having a seizure, there's a lot of muscle movement. Muscles are contracting and relaxing at really high speeds, and that causes body temperature to go up. And so a lot of times when patients with this type of seizure are presented, their body temperature, when it's measured with a thermometer, is really high. Proteins in the body don't like high temperatures. Those proteins actually, for lack of a better term, cook in the body. And when they cook, they break down and they lose their function. They don't do what they're supposed to do in the body. And so we can have a lot of potential complications because of seizures that last that long. The third scenario is when the seizure just doesn't stop. It goes for a lot more than five minutes. It's not stopping at all. That scenario is called status epilepticus. And that is a quintessential emergency for any animal, human, cat, dog. They need to get to the hospital as quickly as possible for some very aggressive intervention. Now, here's the thing. Patients with seizure disorders, once they've been accurately diagnosed and effectively managed with medicines, the vast majority of them can go on to lead happy, 
high quality lives with their families at home. The point is seizures are not normal. Seizures should be fully investigated with your primary care doctor. Your primary care doctor may also recommend that you partner with a board certified veterinary neurologist. But in terms of emergency situations with a seizure patient, if your dog has more than two seizures in a 24 hour period, if they have a seizure that lasts more than five minutes but then stops, and certainly if they have seizure activity that is not stopping, those are distinct scenarios that necessitate bringing your dog to a veterinarian immediately. So we think of a seizure as kind of an active thing where the patient is moving and may or may not seem to be aware of what's going on. But we also see another problem that I think pet lovers need to know is an emergency situation, and that is collapse. Could you talk about seeing collapsed dogs? Yeah. So collapse can actually be a a challenging issue for veterinarians to appropriately and accurately diagnosed because there's lots of reasons that a dog could collapse. So we were just talking about seizures and that is indeed one of the major reasons why animals collapse. Another common reason that animals collapse is because they have underlying heart disease. When an animal collapses because of underlying heart disease, we use the term syncope. Syncope happens because there was a temporary moment where the brain did not get enough oxygen, and so the animal collapses. And syncope or syncopal episodes can look very similar to seizures. And indeed, as I mentioned earlier, it can be challenging for a veterinarian to distinguish seizures from syncopal activity. So really the best advice is if your pet is experiencing collapse or an altered state of being, it's a good time to get some medical help for sure. Yeah, because did they collapse because they had a seizure? Did they collapse because they have an underlying heart issue that caused syncope? And I would say the third major reason for animals to have a collapse episode is because they started to bleed internally. An internal organ like the liver or the spleen has a problem with it, has, for example, possibly a tumor, and it started to bleed. And when you bleed, as you bleed progressively, you become weaker. And when you're weaker, you will ultimately collapse. So if your dog collapses, you may not know the reason. Get that dog to an animal hospital as quickly as possible and work with the medical team attending to your pet so that we can figure out what caused that collapse and hopefully get your pet home to you to lead a very happy quality of life. Okay, so as an ER doctor, there are probably some things that every ER doctor, whether human or veterinary, sees, and those are things like traumatic events. Can you just sort of tell us some of the interesting things that you have seen that were trauma? Oh, sure. Dogs like to get into lots of stuff outside, don't they? So thinking of some of the exciting things. And, you know, that sounds very weird to say, to use the word exciting when I'm talking about animals being injured, but taking care of the sickest of the sick is why I went into veterinary medicine. So I like helping patients that have experienced trauma. So we could be talking about animals that have been hit by a motor vehicle involved in a car accident. We could be talking about animals that have uh, fallen from a deck and they've fractured a leg, they've broken a limb. We could be talking about hunting accidents where animals have, dogs have been accidentally shot with an arrow because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And if you live in a metropolitan region, you may also have dogs that are injured and are gunshot victims. So there are lots of reasons for animals to be traumatized. It doesn't always have to be non-animal related. Sometimes dogs just don't get along. And we have an acronym in veterinary medicine that we use called BDLD. And what that stands for is big dog, little dog. And what we mean by that is a big dog attacked a little dog and caused significant trauma. It's not very common that a little dog is going to attack a big dog and cause meaningful life-threatening injuries. But unfortunately, the same can't be said for the other way around. 
And big little dogs, dogs are plucky. They don't back down. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. That little dog syndrome uh, is definitely true. But with the strength of the jaw of a large dog around the neck of a little dog or around the chest cavity of a little dog or the abdominal cavity of a little dog, we can really see some serious and truly life-threatening injuries that necessitate immediate interventions. In my emergency room, we see a lot of big dog, little dog injuries, as well as injuries caused by wildlife, like coyotes. Well, so I would hope that all of my listeners would recognize those ER type things would be pretty obvious, I think. But we've been over some things that might not be as obvious. And I hope that all of my listeners have learned some things about what to watch for and when to call the animal ER. Do not forget that a relationship with your own veterinarian is the most important tool in keeping your dog happy and healthy. I want to thank Dr. Byers for taking the time out of his busy ER schedule talk with us today. Thank you so much, Dr. Byers. Thanks for having me. It's been a blast. And I also want to thank you all for listening to Dr. Cat Gone to the Dogs. And of course, my producer, Mark Winter, who is always amazing. And I want all of you dog lovers to go out and raise the rough. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.